How's it going, people? I'm doing pretty good. I'm feeling rather optimistic, having uh, survived yet another doomsday date. As you can see, it is the 22nd of December. So, I guess we'll stick around for another seven, eight years. I think that's when the next doomsday date comes up. <laughs> so, uh, this is sponsored by Divine Bovine. <laughs> it's heavenly good. Yeah. Well, I'll have this later. Oh, and uh, Dale's Ale. And I'll have one of those right now. Yeah. Somebody gave me a track today, and I think it's appropriate. It's kind of funny, actually, because I pointed out to this gentleman that, uh, hey, you know, we're, just, we're not even supposed to be here today. Wasn't the crapture supposed to happen or, you know, the end of days? And, and he says, well, you know, we don't um, assign dates for Doomsday. And then I read the tract, and it's from the Watchtower Society. Yeah, they, they probably don't do it anymore, I guess. Since they've been wrong so many times. I mean, they started off with the... They were a, a splinter of the Millerites and the Seventh-day Adventists and all. Anyway, the question is... Who really rules the world? And, hey, I can do that too. Look at that, see? Ah. <laughs> okay, so, no, they give us the same title again on the inside. So they really mean it. Okay. So it's a J-Dub track. So it's got to be quality. <laughs> uh, many people would answer the above question with a single word. God. Well, that's not true. Uh, isn't it Lex Luthor? No, no, wait. It's uh, Hal Burton. No, wait, no. Goldman Sachs. No? Who does rule the world? All right, let's find out. Uh, but, si significantly, nowhere does the Bible say that either Jesus Christ or his Father are the real rulers of this world. This one. On the contrary, Jesus said, the ruler of this world will be cast out. If, I, if, if you're talking about who I think you're talking about, wasn't he already cast out? <sighs> and he added, the ruler of the world is coming. I thought he was already here. Uh, <coughs> okay. And... He has no hold on me. And that's from John 12, 31 and 14, 30. It's 16, 11. So they're jumping around, but at least they're staying in the same gospel. <laughs> the nutty one. <laughs> the fourth one. All right. So the ruler of this world is in opposition to Jesus. Who could this be? A clue from world conditions. Oh, here we go. Despite the efforts of well-meaning humans, the world has suffered terribly throughout history. This causes thinking persons to wonder, as did the late Editorial writer David Lawrence, whoever that is, some dead guy, never heard of him. Um, peace on Earth. Nearly everybody wants it. Goodwill towards men. Almost all the peoples of the world feel it towards one another. Do they really? Huh. Then what's wrong? 
Why is war threatened despite the innate desires of people to be nice? Yeah. It seems a paradox, doesn't it? It seems religious hearted, too. Um, when the natural desire of people is to live in, at peace, they continually hate and kill one another. Human nature. And with such viciousness. Consider the cold-blooded excuses in monstrous cruelty. Humans have used gas chambers, concentration camps, flamethrowers, napalm bombs, and other heinous methods of, to torture and slaughter one another mercilessly, and yet they just want peace. That proves it right there. Do you believe that humans who long for peace and happiness are capable in themselves of such gross wickedness against others? Yeah, I do. Sad. What forces drive men to such loathsome deeds or maneuver them into situations where they feel compelled to commit atrocities. Well, they probably think it's for the greater good. <laughs> Sides look to religion for most of those atrocities. I want to picture Jeebus, the way he really looked. They ought to know. Gotta have some divine bovine. It's rude to eat on video, isn't it? Sorry. Heavenly. All right. The rulers of the world identified. Now here we go. There is no need to guess at the matter, for the Bible clearly shows that an intelligent, unseen person has been controlling both men and nations. It says, the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one. <sighs> and the Bible identifies him, saying, the one called devil and Satan. I thought it was Darth Vader. Uh, is misleading the entire inhabited earth, according to 1 John 5.19 and also Revelation 12.9. On an occasion when Jesus was tempted by the devil, Jesus did not question Satan's role as the ruler of this world. The Bible explains what happened. The devil took him along to an unusually high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their glory and said to them, yeah, because see, the world's flat, so, you know, you could stand on a tall mountain and look down at all the kingdoms of the world. If you're on Everest, you'd get frostbite and probably wouldn't have enough oxygen to breathe. And you'd be looking at a bunch of clouds so you couldn't see anything and and the damn planet still curves and you would see all the kingdoms of the world. <sighs> Maybe they were astral traveling. That must have been it. Um, all these things I will give you if you fall down and do an act of worship to me. That's what he said. Then Jesus said to him, Go away, Satan. He really told him. And that's from Matthew 4, 1, and also uh, 8 through 10 of 4. So you just kind of jump from 4, 1, to all the way over to 8, and then 9 and 10. you got to know how to skip around to, do, to get the right meaning. Okay. So, you know, 
Hmm. All right, let's just uh, think about this. Satan tempted Jesus by offering him all the kingdoms of the world. Pretty silly, huh? He also, well, I mean, he offered up a, a guy who's been starving himself. You know, hey, turn this, these rocks into bread because you're hungry. And I'll get you some water. You can have wine to go with that. That was about the only good temptation. That one and you know, all the kingdoms of the world. Although that sounds like a lot of work, running all the kingdoms of the world. But the crowning one was, hey, why don't you jump off a dam at the top of the temple? and You won't splatter all over the place, honest. Angels will bear you up before you strike your heel on a stone. That's a lame temptation, don't you think? Who would be tempted by that? Ah, yeah, good one. And Buddha, at least his three temptations made sense. Yeah, all right. Um, yet, would Satan's offer have been a real temptation if Satan was not actually the ruler of these kingdoms? He was trying to pawn him off on Jebus, probably because he was getting tired of running all these kingdoms. A lot of work. All right. No. He, uh, it would not. It wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> like it does make any sense. Um, and note, Jesus did not deny that all these worldly governments were Satan's. So see, the Bible proves the Bible. <laughs> you don't need to look any further. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So then, Satan, the devil, really is the unseen ruler of the world. That proves it. Just like this is a real planet. <laughs> Look, uh, there's Australia. <laughs> yeah. The Bible, in fact, calls him the god of this system of things. In 2 Corinthians 4, 4, it says it there. At least, probably nowhere else, but it says it there. Yet, how did such a wicked person ever come into this powerful position? <sighs> The one who became Satan had been an angel, created by God. But he became envious of God's position. He challenged God's rightful rulership. To this end, he used a serpent as a mouthpiece to deceive the first woman, Eve. She became evil and was thus able to get her and her husband, Adam, to do his bidding, rather than obey God. According to Genesis 3, uh, 3, 1 through 6, and 2 Corinthians 11, 3. And there's that picture of Jesus, like, turning down these kingdoms, see? You're like, ah, no, none of that. I ain't having it. Say it's here. He's the king of kings. They should have had the king of beers to go with it. He's the king of kings, but the devil's the god of the world. Okay. It's all making notice. Um, he also claimed he could turn all of Adam and Eve's yet unborn offspring away from God. He probably invented evolution to do that. So God allowed time for Satan to try to prove his claim. But Satan has not succeeded. According to Job 1, uh, 6 to 12, and also Job 2, 1 through 10. <coughs> uh, significantly, Satan is not alone in his rulership of the world, he was successful in persuading some of the other angels to join him in rebellion against God. 
These became demons, his spirit accomplices. The Bible speaks of them when it urges Christians stand firm against the machinations of the devil, because we have a wrestling not against blood and flesh, but against the world rulers of this darkness, against the wicked spirit forces in the heavenly places. And that's Ephesians 6, 11, and 12. Resist wicked spirits. These unseen wicked ru world rulers are determined to mislead all mankind, turning them away from the worship of God. And come on, he needs lots of attention. One way wicked spirits do this is by promoting the idea of survival after death, even through God's word. Even though God's word clearly shows that the dead are not conscious. And it says that in like Genesis 2.17, 3.19, Ezekiel 18.4, Psalm 146, 3 and 4, Ecclesiastes 9, 5, and also 10. But it doesn't mention the story of Samuel being resurrected by the witch of Endor, or Saul, because he was conscious, so we can't use that bit. Uh, don't remember the verse citation offhand. It's in Samuel's, probably the first Samuel. It's been a while since I read it. But that doesn't count because they can't use it. All right. Thus, a wicked spirit imitating the voice of one who has died may talk with that one's living relatives or friends, either through a spirit medium or by a voice from, an, from the invisible realm. The voice pretends to be the departed one, yet is actually a demon. Faith is a tricky thing, because you're supposed to believe in unseen shit, but the right unseen shit. Not that other stuff that isn't real. <laughs> uh, so, if you ever hear such a voice, do not be, be deceived. Run away. Uh, reject whoever it, it says. Uh, reject whatever it says, and echo Jesus' words. Go away, Satan. Matthew 4.10 and James 4.7 Do not allow curiosity against about the spirit realm to cause you to become involved with wicked spirits. Such involvement is called spiritualism. But you should, like, you know, get possessed by the Holy Ghost. That's different somehow. Um, and God warns his worshipers against all, against it in all its forms. The Bible um, condemns anyone who employs divination or anyone who consults a spirit medium or a professional fortune teller of events or anyone who acquires the dead. Deuteronomy 18, 10 and 12, 10 through 12. Uh, Galatians 5. 19 through 21 and Revelation 21 8. We're just jumping all around the place. Yeah. Since spiritualism brings a person under the influence of the demons, resist all its practices, regardless of how much fun or how exciting they may seem to be. These practices include crystal ball gazing, the use of Ouija boards. I got one of those. It's from Parker Brothers. Uh, examining the lines in one's hand, palmistry, and astrology, and I'm sure reading tea leaves uh, and a few other things, but they didn't mention those. But don't do them. Demons. Demons have also caused noises and other physical phenomena in houses that they uh, uh, that they make their territory. In addition. Wicked spirits capitalize on the sinful bent of humans 
by promoting literature, movies, and television programs that feature amoral and unnatural sexual behavior. Hmm. They're probably talking about BJ's and butt sex. They get butt hurt about things like that. Someone's doing something. Someone's having a good time. Stop it. Why don't they just live their lives and leave people alone? Because everything's their business, that's why. All right. The demons know that wrong thoughts are not expelled from the mind. Wait. The demons know that wrong thoughts, if not expelled from the mind, will cause indelible impressions and lead humans to behave immorally. Like the demons themselves. Genesis 6, 1, and, uh, and 2, and 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 through 8, and Jude 6. I, yeah. Okay, true. Many may scuff at the idea that this world is ruled by wicked spirits. I thought it was the Illuminati. Or the Sith, Sith Lords or something, you know. But it isn't. Demons. But their disbelief is not surprising. Since the Bible says Satan himself keeps transforming himself into an angel of light, according to 2 Corinthians 11, 14. I thought he was invisible. Uh, the most clever deception has been in blinding many to the fact that he and his demons really exist. But do not be deceived. The devil and his demons are real. And you need to resist them continually. According to Peter, 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. Happily, the time is, is now near when Satan and his cohorts will be no more. The world, including its demon rulers, <coughs> is passing away. The Bible assures, but he that does the will of God remains forever, happily ever after. According to 1 John 2.17. What a relief it will be to have that evil influence removed. May we thereafter be among those who do God's will and enjoy life forever in God's righteous new world, his new world order. Psalm 37, 9 through 11, also uh, 29, and 2 Peter 3, 13, and Revelation 21, 13. Three and four, and that's it. J Dub Track, Watchtower Society. I'll include the information wherever YouTube likes to put it these days. I promised the guy I would read it, and I did it where it will do the most good on the interwebs. So let me know if this changed your life or you learned something. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having. Until the next doomsday, at least. Bye.